shocking number has been published on the international media. It is a number of 85 people, the richest 85 people, who own as much as half of the population of this world. Nothing demonstrates so clearly how mad capitalism and how mad this world is. If 85 people have grabbed as much wealth as 3.5 billion people on this planet have. The aim of the World Economic Forum meeting tomorrow in the Guggenheim Museum is to stabilize this world order in the interest of capital and is to continue this process of distribution of wealth from the lower classes up to the richest 1% of our societies. And therefore, I think it is so good and so important that the comrades from the Abachale left of Basque Country are organizing this counter summit today and this demonstration tomorrow to demonstrate that there is resistance to this brutal world order of capitalism. And I want to thank you a lot for the invitation and the possibility to speak here. It is a big honor for me, especially as I already used to be active in many of the protests against the big summits of global capital in the last years, like in Prague, in Genoa, in Heiligendamm, and now in Bilbao. I'm really glad to be here. The ruling classes of Europe, with the help of their instrument, the Troika, they have used the Euro crisis to speed up even more this process of distribution of wealth from the lower classes up to the richest parts of our societies. They have used the Euro crisis to cut the wages all over Europe. They have used the Euro crisis for attacking the social and welfare systems all over Europe. And they have used the Euro crisis to pub to privatize many of our public goods, like our trains and transport systems, our hospitals and universities, our schools, and so on. The German government has been a driving force behind this process and behind this disastrous and brutal austerity politics in Europe. The Merkel government is highly responsible for the fact that the banks and not the people have been saved during this crisis. The Merkel government is highly responsible for the mass starvation, mass unemployment and mass poverty we are facing in so many, especially southern European countries nowadays. In this situation, my party, the Linke, the left party of Germany, has a high responsibility as we are fighting Merkel in her homeland and as we are trying to fight austerity right in the heart of the European austerity beast, which is Germany. Die Linke has voted in Parliament against every single austerity measure imposed by the Merkel government. We have mobilized to protest against austerity in Germany and we have tried to demonstrate solidarity with our comrades from the other left parties in Europe and with the workers and social movements in other countries. I think it's important to understand that not all Germans do support the Merkel government. And not all Germans do profit from the austerity policies imposed by the Merkel government in Europe. The capitalist classes are the big winners of this European crisis. And the biggest winner of the capitalist classes is the German capitalist class. But it's not the German workers. In Germany, we have a stagnation of wages since already 10 years. There have been no increase in wages of working people. We have a huge sector of precarious jobs, a huge sector of low wage jobs, and we do not even have a minimum wage in Germany until now. Germany has become the country in Europe with the biggest wealth gap between poor and rich people. And you know how much better the situation is of most German workers 
compared to workers in Greece or Spain. So think about how incredibly rich and powerful the German ruling class has become during the crisis if we are the country with the biggest gap in wealth between the lower and the richest parts of our society. So one of the concrete demands of the Linke in Germany is the demand for higher wages for German workers. We demand higher wages to make German economy less competitive towards the South. We demand higher wages to redistribute at least a little bit of the wealth from the richest classes to the working classes. So we are supporting trade union movements and strike movements to get higher wages in Germany. We were asked to speak about alternatives today. My comrades already have said many things about left-wing alternatives and I just want to be brief on it because I think our alternatives are very obvious. We need a radical redistribution of wealth from the richest to the working and lower classes of our society. We need the highest possible taxes on the rich people. And we need this money for a European-wide investment program to create jobs, to finance a good healthcare system, to finance a good educational system. It is obvious, it is obvious that we need a free public transport system all over Europe also to challenge the environmental crisis we are facing. It is obvious that we need open borders in Europe and we have to crack down those fortresses of Europe to make it possible for our brothers and sisters from the working people in the south of the world to come to Europe to find jobs and to find a good life here. I think all these things are kind of obvious. Our problem is not that we do not have alternatives. Our problem is that we do not have the power to make these alternatives reality. So I think we need to debate about strategies. We need to think and debate about how to challenge austerity and how to really challenge the power of transnational capital. The coming European elections, I think, are a very good and important opportunity to show our alternatives, to make left forces visible. And we should struggle as hard as we can to have good results for the left forces in these elections. And I really hope for the best possible result for Izquierda Unita in the Spanish state and for the comrades from EH Bildu here in Euskal Herria. And I really hope that we will see Jose Juaristi as a member of the next European Parliament and also as a member of the faction of the GUI NGL, which is the faction of the left forces in the European Parliament. But good results at these elections are by far not enough. We live in a world where capital has become so incredible, strong and powerful that the real power does not lie anymore in the parliament. The real power does not lie anymore in the national government. The real power is lying in the headquarters of corporate global capital. And if we want to confront the power of global capital, we have to develop a strategy of systematically building the counter forces against capital in our societies. We have to build strong and militant unions able to confront capital in the workplaces. We have to build strong and militant social movements able to challenge the power of capital in our societies. And we have to build strong and militant left parties that are active and based in trade union struggles and in social movements. We need left parties that are putting their resources into building trade unions, powerful and fighting trade unions, and building powerful and fighting social movements. We need left parties that are able to make radical anti-capitalist alternatives visible. And we need parties that are able to connect the day-to-day -day struggle of ordinary people for wages or housing or better living conditions with a long-time perspective of a democratic and socialist society. And 
So I think if we really want to successfully fight austerity in Europe, and if we really want to successfully fight the power of global capital, we have to change in many ways the way how left parties in Europe are working. For example, if there is a strike movement, it is not enough if we have a resolution declaring our solidarity, as we are doing it so often. It is not enough to send a member of parliament there to demonstrate solidarity, even if this is good and important. We have to develop a model of party work where ordinary members of our party join picket lines if there is a strike, where members of our party go out to the streets and support the strike movement. We need a model of parties where we are really building social movements and putting our resources into building those social movements as a counterforce to capital. And I think very often we still work in an old model of representation, you know? I mean, we represent working people in the political area, in parliament. We give a voice to the demands of people in the political sphere, which is good and important. But this model is not enough if we really want to confront global capital. Representation is not enough. We need the self-activity of masses of people, of millions of people who have to take up the struggle and the fight against global capital. This is the only choice we have if we really want to change the direction of politics in Europe and in the world. Our parties have to become spaces for self-organization and self-emancipation of ordinary people. We need a model of parties where we are really connecting the struggles of unions and the struggles of social movements, which are often not linked together. As you know, in the Indignado movement in Spain, there was no close link to trade union struggle. We have to be the force linking trade unions and social movements. And we have at the same time connecting the struggles of unions and movements with a common anti-neoliberal and anti-capitalist perspective. Most left parties in Europe, I think, are still quite far away from such a model, and my party as well is still quite far from such a model. But at least in Germany, the chairpersons of our party, Bond Rixinger and Katja Kipping, have opened up a debate about the functioning of a left-wing party, about the role that we have to play inside of trade unions and movements. So I hope that this debate will develop and things will develop for, for, forward. Events like this one this weekend organized by the Albert Schale left is very important for our common goal to challenge global capital. These counter summits like we have today are very important to discuss our alternatives and strategies. Demonstrations like the one tomorrow are really important to make it visible that there is resistance to capitalism here in Europe. In Germany this autumn there will be a big anti-capitalist event organized by the German left. It's called Blockupy. It will be taking place when the European Central Bank will be open up their new and fancy big building in Frankfurt. We will then organize a counter summit and a big demonstration and we will try to physically block those opening with thousands of people sitting on the streets, blocking the streets of Frankfurt in a united action of civil mass disobedience. Because I think it's important that we not only demonstrate our protests and demonstrations, but that we really try to confront and block the capitalist institutions where we can. The date of this opening is still not known, but we will know it with enough time before to have a big mobilization. So I would like to invite all of you here from Reitz Galleria to come this autumn to Frankfurt to join us in a united action of mass civil disobedience against the European Central Bank, against the politics of Merkel, of the Troika and of global capital. Thank you very much.